Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate a Franciscan saint, Saint Didacus Confesso, a Franciscan lay brother, the first of the lay brothers to be canonized. We are in the 15th century. He was born about 1400. He first joined the Third Franciscan Order <clears throat> as a, a man of prayer and contemplation. Under the guidance of a priest, he spent most of his life in prayer and contemplation. He was very uh, used to this uh, solitary prayer and uh, contemplation. Eventually, he guided always by the priest made up his mind and entered the Franciscan order in Spain. He was born in Spain, in the province of the observant friars, the strictest Franciscan <clears throat> observants. And uh, as a friar, he uh, became a lay brother and uh, his main office was to look after the needs of the friary, such as cooking, sweeping the floor, and going around for, uh, his, uh, for begging some food and something necessary to the friars. A very humble office given to him. But Didacus enjoyed this office because in that humility, in that simplicity of life, he saw the best way to serve Jesus and to become like him, to abase himself. This is a beautiful characteristic of Franciscan life, the fact that not all friars become priests, but there are some friars who remain lay brothers. And if you remember, St. Francis himself was uh, not a priest, he was only a deacon. The reason he renounced uh, the priesthood was the fact that he felt unworthy to be a priest. Such a great dignity is the priesthood. And St. Francis, a great man of God, uh, was considered himself unable to be a priest for the holiness of life required by a priest for such a great office. St. Didacus wanted to follow St. Francis in his footsteps and to be a humble friar. His main uh, his main office, beside this humble service, was also to pray. And his favorite prayer was contemplation. He also, always imitating the zeal of St. Francis, wanted to even die as a martyr. And for this reason, for his zeal to convert the infidels, he was sent by his superior with other friars to the Canary Islands, at that time still uh, inhabited by some very wild infidels. He was preaching uh, ardently and he converted many but he was spared from dying as a martyr. Then, during the great jubilee in 1450, he was called to Rome by the Pope, Nicholas V, and by the vicar of the Franciscan order, the great St. John Capistran. He was called to Rome also to assist at the canonization of another great 
Franciscan saint, Saint Benedict of Siena. Saint Didacus was assigned in Rome to the convent of Araceli, and there he had the office to look after the sick friars and sick people. There are many miracles uh, worked out by the intercession of this saint by just signing these uh, sick people with the sign of the cross. He was very devoted to Our Lady, and uh, in this church there was a special miraculous image, miraculous because of the presence of Saint Didacus. He was looking after the lamp always burning in front of Our Lady's image, and uh, he used that same oil of the lamp to anoint the sick people, and they were cured. Uh, feeling that his death was at hand, he wanted to wear a very worn out habit to be in that final moment of his life a really poor Franciscan friar. And his last words in staring at the cross, the great book that he has always read in his life, the only book he could read because he was uneducated was the cross. And by the end of his life, staring at the cross, he began to pray the hymn, that beautiful hymn, saying, O oh, sweet wood, O oh, sweet nails. And then he died. His body was, in, uh, since his death, there was a beautiful smell coming from his body, incorrupt body. We uh, have to know that Saint Didacus, though he uh, was a simple fry, uneducated, as just said, but he was very wise because of his simplicity and because of his prayer life, to the point that the very learned theologians very much enjoyed his, uh, his presence and his conversation to dispute about very difficult and subtle topics. We pray today to Saint Didacus, who died in four, 1463. Uh, we pray to him today, especially with friars and uh, all Franciscan people, tertiaries, uh, so that we can have in him a great uh, model, a great inspiration to follow Jesus with Saint Francis and all Franciscan saints. The great inspirational model is his humility and simplicity. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord. Jesus in the Gospel set a beautiful example of holiness and uh, greatness. And this Example is the littleness. If you do not become like a baby, like a child, a simple person, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. The measure of uh, that greatness, holiness, is littleness. This is Saint Didacus' example of life that we wish to imitate, to be faithful to our vocation, to be faithful to Christ, Christ crucified. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.